In this video, we're going to go over the top 10 subjects that you're most likely to encounter in a typical algebra course, whether you're taking it in high school or if you're taking it in college or at your local university. So the first topic that you are definitely encounter in algebra is linear equations. So here's what you need to know. You need to know how to graph a linear equation. You also need to know how to solve linear equations. You need to know how to find the x and y intercepts, how to calculate the slope between two points. You need to understand parallel and perpendicular lines. If you remember, parallel lines, they have the same slope and they never intersect. Perpendicular lines, they intersect at right angles or at 90 degrees. The slope of two parallel lines are the same, and the slopes of perpendicular lines, they're negative inverses of each other, or negative reciprocals of each other. So that's the first topic that you need to know. For those of you who want to get into this topic, I'm going to post a video link in the description section below in this video. So feel free to check that out if you want to get a head start into linear equations. Now the next topic has to do with absolute value. You need to know how to solve absolute value equations. You also need to know how to graph absolute value equations. Linear equations, they're basically a straight line. They can go up, they can go down. Absolute value graphs they tend to have a V shape. It can be, it can open upward if it's positive. It can open downward if it's negative. The absolute value of any negative number is always a positive number. Just to give you some insight into what you will be learning when you go into that topic. The next topic is inequalities. You need to know how to solve inequalities. This include linear inequalities, compound inequalities, and also absolute value inequalities. You also need to know how to graph inequalities on a number line. That's how you typically show your solution. So for instance, let's say you have x is greater than 5. You could show it on a number line like this. Because it's greater than 5 but not equal to it, we're going to have an open circle and we're going to shade to the right. So that's how you can graph an inequality on a number line. Next, we have quadratic equations. And this is going to be a big chapter in algebra. You're going to spend a lot of time on this particular topic. So I'm going to put more videos in the description section that's going to cover absolute value equations, inequalities, and even quadratic equations for those of you who want to get a head start into those topics. So with quadratic equations, you need to know how to graph a quadratic equation. You also need to know how to solve one, which you can do by completing the square. You can also solve quadratic equations by factoring and also by using the quadratic formula, which looks like this x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So you're going to be using that formula a lot. Now if you're wondering what's the difference between a linear equation and a quadratic equation, here's a simple way in which you could distinguish them. So this is a typical linear equation, y equals 2x plus 5. And here is your typical quadratic equation. The key difference has to do with the degree of the polynomial. Here, this is degree 1. You won't see an x squared. You simply will see x or x to the first power. When dealing with quadratic equations, you're dealing with a polynomial of degree 2. x is raised to the second power. And that's a quick and simple way to distinguish the two. Now the next topic is solving systems of equations. 
what is a system of equation? You can have a system of two equations, a system of three equations. So here's an example. Let's say you have 2x plus 3y is equal to 4, and 3x minus 5y is equal to 8. This is a system of two equations, two linear equations. And you could solve it using the substitution method or the elimination method. You can also have a system of three equations, which you'll have three variables, x, y, and z. I have videos on YouTube that can show you how to solve that. If you type in systems of equations in the YouTube search box, and then after that, organic chemistry tutor, it's going to show up. The next topic has to do with polynomials, add in polynomials, subtract in polynomials, multiplying, dividing them, graphing. So here's an example of multiplying two polynomials x squared plus 5x plus 8 multiplied by 2x squared plus 3x minus 9. So here you're multiplying two trinomials, and that is an example of what you'll be doing when you go over that topic. Next up, we have logarithms. When going over this chapter, you need to know how to graph a logarithmic function and also exponential functions. You need to know how to evaluate logarithms, how to break them apart, split them up, combine them into a single log, and things like that. But let me give you a basic introduction into how they work. Let's say you have log base 4 of 16. What does that equal? When you see that, think of it this way. 4 raised to the what power is 16? How many 4s you have to multiply to get to 16? The answer is 2. 4 squared is equal to 16. So here's another example. What is log base 2 of 8? How many 2s do you have to multiply to get to 8? 2 to the what power is 8? The answer is 3. 2 to the third power is equal to 8. Here's another one log base 3 of 81. How many 3's do you have to multiply to get to 81? 3 to the what power is 81? You know that 3 to the 4th power is 81, so the answer is 4. So that's a simple introduction into how you can evaluate logarithmic expressions. It gets more complicated than that, but that's, uh, that's how it works. So now let's move on to the next one, which has to do with rational functions. When dealing with rational functions, you're going to have an x variable in the bottom of a fraction. So this is an example of a rational function. y is equal to 1 over x plus 2. When you graph it, you're going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2, because that's where you get a 0 in the denominator of the fraction. So this graph will look something like this. It has a vertical asymptote at negative 2, a horizontal asymptote of 0. So when dealing with rational functions, you need to know how to graph them. You need to know how to identify the horizontal and the vertical asymptote, and things like that. You also need to know how to add or subtract rational functions. And to do these problems, focus on getting the common denominator. Then you can combine the numerators of the two fractions. And you also need to know how to multiply and divide rational functions as well. Now the next topic has to do with radical functions and radical expressions. So typically, you're going to be dealing with a lot of square root functions. For instance, how would you add the square root of 18 plus the square root of 27? 
what you need to do is you need to break these things down. Actually, let me change this. Let's say we have the square root of 18 and the square root of 50. How would you add these two? What you need to do is break down 18 into 9 and 2, 50 into 25 and 2. 9 and 25, they're perfect squares, which means you could take the square root of those numbers. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 25 is 5. Now, notice that you have a common radical here. This situation becomes similar to adding 3x and 5x. When you add in two variables, in this case x, what you need to do is add the coefficients together. So 3 plus 5 is 8, so you get 8x. Here we're going to add the coefficients. So 3 plus 5, that's going to be 8, but times the square root of 2. So you're going to be adding and subtracting rational expressions, multiplying, dividing, all of those operations in addition to knowing how to graph a radical function. So that's how you can add two radical expressions. Now the next topic has to do with sequences and series. Two sequences that you need to know are arithmetic sequences and geometric sequences. In an arithmetic sequence, you're going to be adding by a common difference. With geometric sequences, think of multiplication versus addition. So the one on the left is associated with addition. The one on the right is associated with multiplication. So here's an example of an arithmetic sequence. What do you see? in the pattern of numbers here. Notice that the common difference is 3. We're adding 3 to get to the next number. Here's an example of a geometric sequence. Notice that the common ratio is 2. We're multiplying by 2 to get to the next number. So for this chapter, you need to know how to find the nth term in this case, how to find the fourth term, how to find the value of the sixth term or the twentieth term. You, you also need to know how to find the sum of a, a series or a sequence. Like what is the sum of the first five terms? Or what is the sum of the first 100 terms? And there are formulas that will help you to calculate that. But I'm going to put a link in the description that gives you a good introduction into arithmetic and geometric sequences. So feel free to take a look at those videos. And thanks for watching.